Hi, this is Corey McCarthy, and welcome to a new episode of Fit, Formidable, and Fantastic. That's right. Go F yourself, and happy Meatless Monday. Um, a lot of, in this episode, I'm going to delve into another, what I call, unscientific slash pseudoscience vegan myth that's really born more of anecdote and word of mouth and that sort of thing than it is of any kind of reality. Um, and that is that a lot of vegans like to believe the plant-based diet has these magical properties and claims less illness, anti-aging, uh, etc., etc. The truth is there is no conclusive evidence that well, showing the superiority of a healthful plant-based diet approach over any other healthfully approached dietary method. The key words there are healthfully approached. And, and I emphasize conclusive evidence, because you'll find some poorly constructed studies or studies that raise an eyebrow and raise some interest for further research, but nothing really conclusive. So, without digging up past video subject matter, um, veganism is an ethical way of life. It was not founded due to any real or perceived health benefits. Um, but again, I don't want to go into subject matter I've already gotten into in my last videos to any real length, so I'm going to leave it at that. Vegans can and do get sick, like anyone else, um, if they're exposed to the right conditions and circumstances. It is relative, of course, to the person and factors in their own body. Hell, for instance, high, higher circulating testosterone levels have been linked to lower immunity and therefore more susceptibility to bacterial, viral, fungal, and parasitic infections, um, which demonstrates actually why men, usually speaking, are more prone to getting ill versus women. Because naturally men, as you, as you may or may not know, I would assume you'd know, have higher circulating testosterone levels than women on average. So, um, case in point here. I am currently, if you can't tell from my voice and the way I, I uh, I'm, I'm just, I just don't look right, I'm sure, right now. I'm currently recovering from a short bout with a cold. Um, I've been out with it for the last couple of days, literally just sleeping, eating, and trying to stay hydrated. But I was feeling it coming on about a day before that. So really, for the past few days, I have been sinking into the cold. And I, of course, am a vegan. So I felt inspired to do this video this week for Meatless Monday. I thought it was very appropriate. Now, I am not a fan of taking medications. Now, don't get me wrong. Don't pass me off as a conspiracy theorist here. A conspiracy theorist here. Um, I take them when I absolutely need to. So I wanted to share some vegan-friendly, non-medicative remedies for the common cold. Um, the majority of which I have I either often use or I have tried at one point in time or another. And, of course, I think it's relevant because it is that time of year after all. First of all is water. You want to drink a lot of water. You want to stay hydrated. You want to flush your system. Um, perhaps add fresh lemon juice. Um, to your water, which can help loosen congestion and aid in hydration. Furthermore, salt water. If you add about a quarter to a half a teaspoon to, of salt water, salt sorry, to warm water, it can relieve your throat. Uh, <coughs> sorry, soreness, dryness, itchiness, etc. Personally, and this is something I have been doing the last couple of days, is I've been dosing a pinch of salt with some lemon juice in filtered water, and Combining those two suggestions I just gave. Um, the next would be uh, saline nasal sprays, um, which you can get over the counter. Um, these can help relieve a stuffed up, your stuffed up sinuses. Uh, another one would be zinc. Now, the thing about zinc is studies have shown mixed results with this. And the research that has shown benefit had zinc being administered at least a day before onset of illness. So perhaps... Um, ensure that you're just getting your RDA of zinc each day instead of loading up at one, once you are already ill, which studies have shown no benefit for. 
Um, 11 milligrams is the RDA of zinc for males that are 19 and older. 9 milligrams is the RDA of zinc for females that are 19 and older. Um, that increases to 11 milligrams for pregnant women and 12 milligrams for lactating females. Same age bracket. Next is vitamin C, a very common one people turn to when they're getting sick. This is also, <coughs> pardon me, this is also a mixed bag. While it won't prevent a cold, according to the research, it can help shorten the lifespan if taken pre-onset. My best advice to this is, like with zinc, ensure that you're getting your RDA of vitamin C each day instead of overloading on it once you're showing signs of being ill, which is basically, according to research, too late. Um, the 90, 90 milligrams is the RDA of vitamin C for males, 19 and older, uh, and 75 is milligrams is the RDA of vitamin C for females, 19 and older. And again, that will increase to 85 milligrams for pregnant women and 120 milligrams for lactating females, again, the same age bracket. Finally, um, echinacea. But like with, vitamins, with zinc and vitamin C, again, it's mixed. Um, the research is not conclusive, and the, on, and the only studies where any benefit was shown um, basically showed that severity and duration were decreased, and this is only when echinacea is dosed in the early stages of, of an onset. Uh, despite the mixed bag of results, if you are trying to steer clear of medications and you want to give alternative methods a go, since there are no negative effects associated with um, modest dosing of echinacea, in other words, following the labels, instructions, um, it can't hurt to try it. It won't really do anything to hurt you, unless, of course, you have some kind of, um, I don't even know if this exists, but some kind of, a, of, a, of an allergy to echinacea or uh, that plant species of some kind. So, um, again, I'm not a medical professional, so, you know, you should always take my advice that I give here, um, and then before using it, maybe discuss it with your healthcare practitioner or uh, or some or, or or whatever because I'm not a medical professional so this is just general advice assuming no no kind of um, sensitivities or allergies um, <laughs> I was just thinking that you know I'm I'm ill right now but luckily this is over a video so you can't you can't catch anything that I have um, sorry um, my head's a little foggy so maybe that was a bad joke but it's true um, anyway, beyond those suggestions, of course, there's the obvious one, and that is to get plenty of rest. You need to rest. And I have to emphasize this, because you think it might be obvious, but if you're like me, and you enjoy working out vigorously, cross-training, you know, lifting, martial arts, sport, whatever, you will need to just suck that up. As much as it sucks, believe me, believe me, it sucks. I've missed lifting for the last two days, and... You know, uh, I, I really, I'm just like, it's, 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 it's a psychological thing. It's just, as, <coughs> it's upsetting me. But you need to suck that up and take the time to let your body rest and recover. Because there's no sense in adding to your body's recovery list. Um, you know, the list of things your body has to recover from. You know, cold or flu, plus hypertrophy from workout, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And thus delaying the healing process of any of those by working out. So furthermore, your workouts will also most likely not be at 100% if you're ill. So you know what? You might as well just rest it off instead of, you know, um, basically fueling that fire and giving your body more work to do. So anyway, that's really all I have to say. I don't have anything else to add to this. I just thought it was a very appropriate video to do as a vegan and for a meatless Monday. And given that those myths that are circulating about the vegan lifestyle. There's so many of them. Because for whatever reason, a lot of vegans tend to want to refute want to refuse science for some reason. They they um they want to believe in magic. And uh, it's it's really sad because it it gives us a bad name in general. It makes everyone think that we're just like a bunch of hippies floating in the clouds and um so anyway, I could just ramble on when I'm when I'm feeling like this. Um, if you have anything you want to add to this or you want to, uh, any questions you have, please drop them below in the comments and I'll get back to them as soon as I can. Um, 
Otherwise, I'll see you guys on Friday for a regularly scheduled episode. Until then, stay fit, stay formidable, and stay fantastic, and I hope you're all feeling well. Take care.